called to order the regular common council meeting Monday, April 5th, 7 p.m. Roll call. Ron? Yes. Langan? Yes. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Bagsy? Yes. Yes. Burdick? Yes. Uh, next item is Pledge of Allegiance. Confirmation of appropriate meeting notice. Meeting was noticed on Friday, April 2nd. Agenda's posted at the post office, library, and city hall. And that's for the two TIF. Right. Items eight and. Those people here for license, too. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And we can leave the okay. order if you wish. That's fine. We can, we can go to the license and then skip down to that. It's not probably, it's not going to be that long. Yeah, it's not too long, is it? <laughs> okay, next item is council acceptance <laughs> of agenda. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Personal appearances. Anyone that wishes to speak on anything that's not on the agenda? Uh, Ramona, Ramona, can I can you get off the agenda so I can see the council chamber? Pardon me? This is Sam Martino. Can you eliminate the uh, uh, agenda so I can see the council chambers? Is Cindy running that up there? Um, you can't. One chair. Um, can you now see all the? Uh, I, I see a small window. Well, you know, it's up to the council. The, the agenda is here for the people in the room to participate. So, oh, okay, uh, I'll I'll work it out. Okay, anyone else? Okay, let's move on to the minutes from March fifteenth. Special council meeting minutes. Motion to approve minutes of March fifteenth, twenty twenty one special council meeting. Second. Second. Any corrections or additions? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Bagsy? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. And the next one is to consider approval of the minutes from March 15th regular council meeting. Make a motion to approve. Second. Any corrections or additions? The, uh, they don't reflect that the utility and safety committees gave reports. I don't know how important that is, but that's not, not reflected in the minutes. It's the council's uh, practice, right? To decide if they want that information. If there wasn't, there wasn't oh. anything necessarily to report. Correct, because they, their minutes themselves would tell what happened at the meeting. So. Oh, okay. I just didn't, wasn't sure. Oh, yeah. So forget it. <laughs> Anyone else? Roll call. Braun? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Sure. Langan? Yes. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is uh, committee reports in the Finance Committee. Yes, Finance met this evening at 6 30. Motion to approve bills and payroll in the amount of one hundred and fifty six thousand forty seven dollars and seventy nine cents. Second. Any questions on the bills? Hearing none, roll call. Davis. Yes. Braun. Yes. Langan. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Radke. Yes. Burdick. Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve a new Class A combination liquor and beer license for, uh, for okay, is this 414 or 424? We approved it at 414 game day liquor. 
So four to two four? Four to four. Okay. So if we can make that correction from finance, we had four fourteen. It says but, negative four fourteen. On this one it does. Yeah, on the, but on our previous, previous one. one it was different. Um, so it's for 424 Game Day Liquor, 18 North Main Street, Agent Randip Paul Singh. I hope I pronounced that correctly. That's motion to approve. Go ahead. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Motion passes. Thank, thank you for coming down. Okay, motion to approve sandwich board sign for Marvin Artley, 2 East Fulton Street. A second. Any discussion? Thank you. Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Ron? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve public event packet for Edgerton's Farmers Market and waive fees as well as allowing restrooms to be open during the Farmers Market. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Craigie? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve public event packet for American Legion food booth at Edgerton's Farmer's Market and waive any fees. I'll second. Any discussion? I, I, I do. I just, I, I know some of it was already brought up at finance. Um, they could have done this without going, they could, they just felt obligated or like doing their own. Uh, well, not, we're, we, we informed the Legion representative, but he wanted to submit it okay, on his own anyway. I wouldn't have, I don't think I'd approve it the way it's written because he doesn't really have much in there. Same as Candy said, it's very unclear. It doesn't tell you anything. It's see, it's see attached, there's nothing attached. I wouldn't yeah. have bothered doing it. I don't know why he even wasted his time and our time. But yeah, he could have just been a vendor with the farmer's right. market. Okay, well, the way, that's the only way anybody's going to find out what he's doing because it's not. Or come to the meeting to help explain. Yeah. Well, he could have done that, but you know, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Roll call. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Maggie? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, motion to approve bid for street milling an overlay 2021 projects to the lowest bidder, which was Payne and Dolan in the amount of $122,894. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Ragge? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve selection of ordinance book recodification vendor to general code based on staff recommendations. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to approve bid for library building tech pointing to the lowest bidder, which is Mark Deegan Masonry mm -hmm. in the amount of $3,485. A second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Verdict? Yes. Motion passes. Motion to accept the bid for sale of multifunction Sony DVD recorder and Nuvico light digital video recorder in the amount of $18. I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? 
Hearing none, roll call. <laughs> Davis? Yes. Josh? Yes. Bragge? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Leiden? Yes. Motion passed. And motion to approve the amendment to City of Edgerton Resolution 22 20C 2021 Salary Resolution. Second. Any discussion? I get just one quick line. On, 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 on the right side, we always put seasonal returns with you know, favorable evaluations. Does he get an extra quarter next year if he comes back? You want that on the agenda for next meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Spend that eighteen dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Roll call. Davis? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. And that's it for finance. Thank you. Uh, we've got one thing to act on here from um, Planning Commission is to consider preliminary approval of a three lot certified survey map for parcel located at located along 406 Colonial Circle and Elm High Drive, parcel 626999. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Burdick? Yes. Radke? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Motion <laughs> passes. Anything else from planning, did we, Jim? Yeah, yes, we did. We had a public hearing and we had a couple other things on the agenda, didn't we? Yes, we had a public yeah. hearing. <laughs> yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. you, want me to oh. you got it with you? I don't I didn't bring mine with. And you got it? You want it in or on me? No, and it's not on the agenda, so we shouldn't we vote on that? Uh no, the rezoning was this is a this was a if you may recall a modification to an original rezone that was already handled by the council before. So that didn't need to come forward. The plan commission just need to relook at that plan because they modified it. Oh, okay. Thanks. Unless Jim wants to do a report on what we did or and. Well, that, that's what I that's yeah, what it's asking. Yeah. Can we do it? Sure. Okay. Well, yeah, all right, yeah. <clears throat> we met and discussed the uh Main Street again, the development, the modification from the R3 similar development to the uh, plan development. And it was approved from, <clears throat> excuse me, they went from 10 duplex, or previously approved for 12, went to 10 duplexes. And in the subdivision part of it, the R2 division, they went from eight to nine duplexes. And uh, it was approved by the Planning Commission, as she said, just as Ramona stated, just as a modification. Um, Hill, that was that. That's that the only other thing we had. Yeah, the other two are on the agenda here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other one's already done. So, well, other, right. other than the, those items there, everything else is covered here. Then at plan, that would be it for planning. Um, public works. Public works met Monday, March twenty second, six p.m. And the only thing we had on the item uh, our agenda was the compost site hours. Howard had provided a log. Uh, and, and a summary of the uh, hours and or the totals of uh, people using the site last year by day, by hour and whatnot. And he did a really good summarizing of it. And we came up with changing the hours on Saturday, Saturday only. What biggest complaint we had was not open early enough. So we changed the hours from one to or 11 to three to um, nine to one. Yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I know I wrote that. that was a, oh, right. Yeah, and it's a nine to one. And that was about the only thing we did. So um, that's it. That was it. Okay. Thank you. Fire District. Um, Fire District will be meeting Thursday um, for our first regular monthly meeting since November of last year. So we're going to be meeting face to face, mask to mask. Um, so I have nothing further to report on that from a meeting perspective, but we do have Chief here, and I know he has stuff to report on. Please. Yep. Oh. I'm glad to. 
Um, Activity-wise, we're staying pretty busy, uh, just a slight bit ahead of last year, but uh, a lot of activity this weekend was pretty busy. Um, Sunday, we were going four different directions at once, um, but guys are doing a good job, so that's all very positive. Um, probably the biggest thing, and I just wanted to make sure that I was here and could answer any questions that people might have. You, you may have seen uh, we've been approached by the town of Milton, make sure I say that very clearly, the township of Milton, um, about possibly uh, discussions related to providing fire protective services and EMS services uh, for them. Um, behind that, we do know that the other townships that make up the current uh, Milton, it's not really a district, but cooperative arrangement, um, are also interested in wanting to talk to us. Um, so um, the township reached out to uh, President Sherman, John Sherman, who's the president of our district board, um, and just asked about, can we, can we talk? Um, and that has led to obviously a lot of um, rumors and, and all sorts of things going on. But literally, um, Chairman Meyer from Milton Township will be at the board meeting on Thursday night and formally ask the board um, to authorize staff. So in essence, uh, Deputy Chief Russ and myself to talk with them and, and see, you know, number one, what they're asking, number two, what their thoughts are, um, and, and start to try to sort, sort of sort out what this might look like. Um, in all fairness to them, uh, the town of Milton has been very clear. We are not the only ones they're talking to. They have made that very clear to us and, and we appreciate that, right? We understand they're looking at their options. Um, as one town board member um, said when he called to ask me a question, um, this is probably the biggest decision they'll make as a township uh, in the 20 years that he's been associated with town government. And I think he's right. I mean, just knowing the substantive nature of what they're wrestling with. So we're approaching it as just one of a couple options they're looking at. They're approaching it the same way. And, and I will do everything I can to try to communicate outside of things <coughs> that shouldn't be discussed publicly. But um, the commitment that both Jason and I made to our department members and to anybody who will listen is that we're gonna communicate and, and talk about what's going on. That this is the kind of thing that you just don't do in a vacuum and not communicate. Um, Chief Russ has been through three um, restructurings of depart multi-community departments in his career. Um, myself on the business side, I lost track after a dozen <laughs> reorganizations and consolidations and buyouts and separations and all that kind of stuff. So he and I both have a lot of experience when it comes to this and we wanna make sure we do this correctly and properly and fairly and openly. Um, the one thing that I have said to a lot of people about this, a um, little bit of mischaracterization in the media as to how this played out. Um, people have talked about the fact that, that the townships and the city were negotiating with the city of Janesville for over a year. And after a year of negotiations, one of the parties decides to back out. And, and that sort of casts them in maybe a, a little disparaging light in terms of how that was portrayed. Um, that is absolutely inaccurate in terms of what happened. They have been talking for about a year they have been waiting for a formal proposal from the city of Janesville. They received that formal proposal. Again, that was closed, so, you know, right? But they received it and within 48 hours made the decision that they wanted to seek options. So um, this characterization that it was going on for a year and then all of a sudden they decided to back out is just absolutely not true. Um, they took one look apparently at what was presented to them and they decided to add it in literally 148 hours. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at. And again, I just, any questions, if anybody has any, I'll certainly try to address them. Otherwise, I'll give you your meeting back. <laughs> Can I just add, um, for you, it makes total sense. For the rest of us, not quite as clear. Okay. But we are talking about the town of Milton, not the city of Milton. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we're 
trying to be very clear about that. Uh, I believe the city of Milton has publicly announced their plans. Um, that was discussed at their city council meeting, I believe, last week, and that was all in open session, so that's all a record, and it does not involve, uh, you can go look at it. <laughs> I won't try to interpret what they do. All right, thank okay. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And that's it for fire district. Just okay. that's not enough. But <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, next item is consider adoption of city of Edger Edgerton resolution 0821 approving amendment number three to tax incremental district number six. Now, does Van Wall want to do some background before we make a motion on this or? Well, they're willing to present so you have some additional information if you'd like. Do we need a motion first? No? Okay. We will let, the, let Jackie do her presentation unless Scott's on here for that. <laughs> I will take the lead on that. Um, I, it looks like I need to have screen sharing enabled in order for me to share slides. Uh, otherwise, I'm happy to just do an, a verbal presentation if that's better. Um, yes, let me work on that. Great. Well, why, why she's working on that, I'd just like to say hello. My name is Jackie Mish. I'm an associate planner with Vanderwall & Associates. I'm joined here by Scott Harrington. He'll be... Did you lose your mic? <laughs> she froze. Um, no, she's on here. Uh -oh. Looks like she froze up. We'll see if she thaws out. <laughs> Just giving us more time to try and get the screen share on. <laughs> yeah. Now you should be able to, Jackie, when you're back. I got a question on that. <laughs> no. Oh, she went away. <laughs> She'll probably try to sign back on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm guessing she's going to. I just sent her a text telling her she was frozen. She may try to sign back in. Let's see what happens. If there's a problem there, then I can kind of take it from here. Well, we can see you again now, Jackie, <laughs> but you are muted. <laughs> Am I unfrozen? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. So it looks like I can share now, but somebody has to stop sharing first is what it's telling me. There we go. Excellent. All right. So... <clears throat> Let's see, so you should all be seeing my my title slide. Can you all hear me? We yes. can hear you, but Excellent. it's a desktop right now. It's a desktop, all right, let's try that again then. Is that us doing that? It might be me. <laughs> let's see. Let's take a second here. I think it, when it kicked me out, it, it got confused. There we go. There we go. Great. How's that? Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. <laughs> All right, we'll dive right in. So I'd like to begin with a proposed amendment to tax increment district number six. So this is your existing um, TIF that covers the downtown area. This TIF was created in 2000 and the city has since amended the boundary for this district twice. Um, as I mentioned, this is encompassing mostly the downtown district and the city is now proposing to add two additional properties uh, to the district that are expected to have redevelopment potential within the life of the TIF district. So those are shown on the map in front of you. They include the former school building on Swift Street that is currently headquarters uh, for IKI. We understand that they're planning on relocating and sort of consolidating all of their operations to their west side location. So this would be, this, this parcel would be available for reuse uh, in the future. Additionally, we've included the 
former Chase Bank building on Main Street. Uh, as you know, that's been vacant for quite some time and it is definitely an infill or redevelopment opportunity. Additionally, the city is also proposing to add project costs to the project plan for this district. And that would enable for the acquisition of land and the development of a public parking lot somewhere in the district or within one half mile of the district. By adding this parking lot, we're not increasing the total level of authorized expenditures. So we'll, we'll be keeping the level of, of spending the same, um, recognizing that not all of the spending has been, uh, we haven't reached our spending limit. So we don't need to um, update our spending in the project plan. For that reason, we don't need to redo all of those tables that we usually do when we create a new TIF district. And so that makes this amendment fairly straightforward and simple. We've also been working on creating a new TIF district, TID 9. So TID 9 is a mixed use TIF. Um, it, so that really just means it contains a mix of uses. So industrial, commercial, or residential. Mixed use TIFs are limited to 35% um, of their area. Uh, cannot exceed, <laughs> cannot be dedicated to newly planted residential. Um, in the case of this TIF district, we have much less than 35% residential, so we're not even close to that threshold. Mixed use districts um, have a 15 year expenditure period with a 20 year maximum life. So as you probably saw in past meetings or past or in your meeting packet, this is the proposed boundary for the TIF district. You can see we're showing the half mile boundary on this map as well. This TIF, TIF district is located on the west side of the city. Um, the impetus for creating this TIF district was or is a planned expansion by IKI. And so you can see that they're included um, in the district. We've also included properties sort of southwest of the railroad tracks. Many of those parcels are actually also in your existing TID 8, but that district is coming to a close. So we were able to include some of those parcels and give them a little more life um, within an active TIF district. So when we create a, a TIF project plan, we wanna make development assumptions about where we think development is likely to occur within the TIF district. So of course, the phase one of the IKI expansion was definitely included in our development assumptions. IKI has also shared that they are likely to do a second and third phase of expansion. And so we included those estimates. Additionally, we um, assumed there was potential for some infill development along Fulton Street, specifically in front of the former um, Dana or Caterpillar plant. Uh, that parking lot is pretty underutilized by the current user and there's definitely potential for a mix of residential uh, multifamily specifically and commercial use along that frontage. So we included some estimates for that. And then to the west of that parcel is a large vacant parcel owned by uh, Phoenix. And that is planned for industrial. And then finally, there are a number of parcels on the other side of the railroad tracks along Elm High Drive that are vacant, currently owned by the care center and they could have potential for multifamily development over the life of the district. So, Table four, which is included in the project plan, this is where we estimate the values of the development that could occur within the TIF district. And we do a phasing schedule by year throughout the life of the TIF district. And that just helps us understand when new increment might potentially come online. So in this table, you'll see that the total development increment created by the TIF could be 57, just over $57 million. So the timing of this is just one possible scenario we don't know exactly when these projects will come to fruition, but this is really important for us to understand how much spending um, by the TIF is possible and when that might occur. This table, we certainly don't expect you to be able to read this on your, on your slide, but we do include a larger version in the, in the project plan. Um, this is our part of our cash flow analysis that shows the value of the district, beginning with its base value of 9.6 million. Um, and then as development increases, you'll see that the base, the value of the property in the district goes up. That also accounts for inflation as well. We also calculate tax revenues based on the new development. So that amounts to just, a, um, just over 22 million over the life of the district. 
So understanding the revenues coming in is, is an important part of our financial feasibility study. Next, we look at cost. Um, so the revenues that we generated on the last table, those can be used for capital projects, infrastructure projects, real estate acquisition, economic development incentives, and, and more. In this case, we have about 3.4 million in infrastructure costs identified. You can see those in the middle of the table. These are identified by your city engineer. We've also included about 5.7 million in development incentives plus administrative and finance charges as well. So total expenditures um, in the project plan are about $2.4 million. Next, we look at, at bond issuances. So how are we going to, when are we gonna borrow if we need to borrow to pay for certain uh, expenses? So we worked on this with Baird, your financial advisor, and they determined that one borrowing is planned for the full amount of capital needed for all of these project costs on the previous slide. So $3.75 million will be borrowed in 2023 at a 3.25% interest rate to be paid back in 17 years. Incentives, um, which are part of our project costs, those would be primarily pay-as-you-go deals, which is the direction most of our client communities have been going. So this is just an important um, exercise to do to determine that TIF whether or not the TIF is financially feasible. And through this exercise, we have concluded that uh, the proposed TID-9 is financially feasible. So Jack, can you go back up a slide or two, please? Absolutely. I'm looking for the, the interest that you had put in the previous, so <clears throat> the finance charges and interest here, it says oh. 3.1, but yet the one, the following one says 1. 1.5 and it has fees of 160. What, how, how do we reconcile those two numbers? Yes, I um, I know that those numbers don't match and I think I'm, I'm gonna have to think about it for a second, but I do know it, I, it has to do with- I jump in, Jackie? Yeah, please, Scott. Yeah, the, um, the finance charges include interest paid to developers. And so um, the developer payment um, is factored on, um, uh, an amount that's set when the development occurs. And because it's a pay as you go and paid out over time, it's paid with interest. So that developer payment of 7 million includes the principal amount that would be provided to the developer as well as the interest amount. And those two interest charges together equal that finance charge shown uh, on the other table. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Uh, any other questions on this while I'm here? Okay, I'm gonna keep rolling. So as you may be aware, uh, state law requires that no more than 12% of your community's equalized assessed value can be within a TIF district. And so we run a quick calculation whenever we amend or create a new TIF district to make sure that we're in compliance with that. Uh, so just real quickly, uh, when we we look at the city's total equalized assessed value, it's about 456 million. 12% of that would be about 54 million. We incorporate the increment of all the city's existing tax increment finance districts, plus the proposed base value of the proposed TID 9 and the proposed base value of proposed TID 6, just the new parcels. Um, and we are at about 46 million, which is less than our 12%, so, that, so we pass. And then finally, next steps in this process, um, uh, assuming that the council approves the amendment and approves the new district, we would go to the JRB meeting on April 13th. And assuming that they um, approve the, the approval by the council, then we would submit all of our paperwork and the project plans to the Department of Revenue. Happy to take any questions. Well, thank you. Anyone here have some questions at all? Uh, I got one on the previous screen. The um, twelve percent. When yes. does five come off there, and then those dollar amounts come off that that page? I, I think you cut out for a bit, but you asked about the tids that were closing. Right, number five. When does that dollar amount come off there and reflect in our twelve percent limit that we we can gain that three point two percent when that comes off? 
that would come off the moment the district closes. And I'm wondering if your city administrator might know that date offhand. Uh, two meetings ago, probably, or last <laughs> meeting. Oh. So it has closed. So we could even update this. So we have a little little more room legally to keep within the 12%. Yeah, we could, we could absolutely update this to reflect the fact that TID 5 is now closed. Thank you. Okay, you may have noticed that covered both of those items there as we were talking. Um, eight and ten, nine disappeared in here, so. <laughs> but if there's no other questions for Jackie or Scott, look for a motion on number eight. I'll make a motion to approve the adoption of City of Edgerton Resolution 08-21, approving amendment number three to tax in incremental district number six. I'll second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call. Strawn? Yes. Langen? Yes. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Rankies? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. And we'll move on to consider adoption of City of Edgerton Resolution 0921, approving the creation of tax incremental district number nine. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you both for helping us out here. Thank you. And we will. Have a good night. Have a good night. And then we'll move on to consider adoption of City of Edgerton resolution, support of a strong state and local partnership, shared revenue funds, critical services. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Burdick? Yes. Davis? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Radke? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Uh, yes. Motion passes. Next item is to consider City of Edgerton proclamation recognizing April 4th through the 10th, 2021 as National Library Week. So moved. I'll second. Do we need that right into the motion, Bill? Yeah, everyone has it in their packet. It's all in there. Unless, unless Kirsten wants to read it. That's okay, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> we probably should have read them all then if we were gonna read them here because there's other ones here too. Okay, motion and a second. Uh, any other questions? Roll call. Shaw? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Davis? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Motion passes. It'd be a lot easier reading without these things on. So yeah. <laughs> really want to do uh, next item is to consider City of Edgerton proclamation recognizing the last Friday in April as Arbor Day. So moved. Second. Couple seconds. This one, you want to make I, I do have a, a comment on this. So the uh, the tree board met earlier today, uh, and we, um, while I think we're, it's okay that we're going to recognize it uh, the last Friday in April, the fact is is Edgerton schools are actually closed on April 30th. Therefore, we're going to celebrate it on Thursday, April 29th, in which we're going to uh, have the kiddos uh, help plant trees at Dick Dickinson um, Park. Uh, on, on Thursday, and the time is TBD once we figure out when we can get them and, and walk them down there and, and do the, the ceremony. Wonderful. Okay, any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Davis? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? Yes. Braun? Yes. Langen? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Motion passes. Next thing is mayor, all the person, the staff reports. Uh, tomorrow's election day. Other than that, I have nothing else. Is anyone that has anything? Other than we do not have to go into closed session. Both of those items, the uh, information we needed back did not get here. So 
There's no closed session. So if you have anything else back on the on the on the bottom item, bring it up now. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Davis? Yes. Radke? Yes. Burdick? No. Nah. Ron? Ah, you, you stay. Ron? Yes. <laughs> Langan? Yes. Shaw? Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to try to get I plan on being here.